It's Haley Gibson here, and today's topic is the development of cancer. Every single one of us at any given point in time have cancer cells present in our bodies. However, our bodies are really great at responding to these cells and destroying them. So back to basics. We're all made of cells. These cells are constantly growing, dividing, and being destroyed in order to maintain homeostasis or balance. Sometimes this process can be disrupted and set off a chain reaction of cellular malfunction that leads to disease, one of which is cancer. Before diving into today's topic, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about myself. Who don't know me, my name is Haley Gibson. I'm a functional nutritionist and registered nurse. Up there in the top left-hand corner, you can see me the day I graduated nursing school with my parents. That was an awesome day. Down below that, you can see a picture of myself with what I call my fit family. Um, they keep me motivated to be healthy and working out. They're a great group of people, and we're enjoying Thanksgiving together. And then to the right of that, you can see myself with Brett Lee, my boyfriend. Um, he's absolutely wonderful to me. He's a firefighter and paramedic. So this is a little bit about me. All right, let's talk about cancer. So this slide does a really great job of illustrating the difference between cancerous and healthy cells. Can cancer cells are completely different from normal cells. I'm going to address three of the major cancer cell attributes that make them extremely harmful. First, lose the normal ability to regulate the cell cycle. Normal cells have the ability to grow, to divide, and die in a controlled manner, while cancer cells reproduce rapidly and indefinitely without dying. Instead of responding to the signals given by the surrounding tissues like healthy cells, cancer cells actually develop what is referred to as metabolic autonomy, which allows them to self-stimulate growth. Secondly, we can call them biologically deaf because they lose their ability to communicate with surrounding tissues. This characteristic contributes to invasive tumor growth. Without proper communication, cells cannot regulate themselves and intrude upon tissues where they are not meant to be. Cancer cells also lack function. This is our last point. Normal cells differentiate into tissues and mature into healthy cells that perform a function. Cancer stem cells never evolve from their immature form and they lack the adhesive properties of healthy cells. They continue to divide and spread in this immature state, and this will eventually lead to tumor growth and eventually metastasis. So this slide shows us the difference between cancer cell division and normal cell division. The process of copying our DNA and making a new cell is a very highly regulated process. However, there are multiple factors that can interfere with our body's ability to replicate DNA accurately and interfere with our body's ability to recognize damaged cells. Some of the most prominent triggering mechanisms behind cancer development include poor activation of antioxidant defense systems. This is personally one of the most common that I see in the testing that we do. Um, inhibited ability to repair cell damage, chronic inflammation, chronic exposure to toxic chemicals, high levels of iron, and inhibited ability to properly detoxify the body. So we've all heard about oxidative stress and its harmful effects on the body. Oxidative stress is also a disruptor for DNA formation and can contribute to cancer cell formation. So what exactly is oxidative stress? So when the body is exposed to physical or chemical stressors, there's often an increased production of free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules that can damage the cells if not controlled. So free radicals are also produced just in energy production. When we eat glucose, we're producing free radicals. Um, less free radicals are produced when we make ketones, which is part of the reason it's believed that ketosis is so beneficial for fighting things such as cancer. Um, antioxidants are the body's solution to free radicals. By interacting with each other, they become stabilized and the free radicals are no longer capable of causing damage. It is common in those with cancer that they have high levels of stress or poor dietary nutrient intake. So, therefore, they have inhib inhibited antioxidant defense systems contributing to uncontrolled cell damage. 
So what do we do? You can strengthen your defense against free radicals by eating an antioxidant-rich diet. I usually have clients start by changing their diet to anti-inflammatory, very first thing, and this involves eliminating common food allergens, drastically lowering sugar intake, and instead opting for healthy fat sources and drastically increasing the intake of antioxidant-rich vegetables. This is imperative. A lot of people who do ketosis, they're really great at eating all the fatty foods, but they oftentimes leave out all the vegetables that we need. So it's very important that you're filling up on antioxidant-rich vegetables as well. Another helpful strategy is by increasing glutathione. Glutathione is considerably the most important antioxidant in the body. Not only does it have powerful antioxidant effects alone, but it also helps regulate the activity of other antioxidants. You can naturally boost glutathione levels by consuming foods rich in the amino acids glycine, glutamic acid, and cysteine, as well as alpha-lipoic acids. Um, also from flavonoids, from fruits and vegetables, and magnesium. Another way to reduce free radicals is to reduce overall stress. Studies have shown that increasing oxygen in uptake through exercise or hyperbaric oxygen therapy can activate genetic pathways that increase antioxidant defenses in the body. So other ways to reduce free radicals is to Reduce overall stress. So use laughter, relationships, exercising, hydration, reducing caffeine intake, and exercising effectively. But when we overexercise, we produce too many free radicals and our body isn't able to cover them all. So we do want to exercise, but not cause inflammation in our bodies. So basically what this slide is showing is that if the rate of DNA damage is greater than the rate of repair, we're at extremely high risk for diseases such as cancer. Our cells face damage every single day. The difference between health and loss of health is our body's ability to handle the amount of damage that we are faced with. So if cancer has already developed, these same strategies can be implemented to slow cancer development and prevent progression to a more aggressive form. Our immune system will analyze a cell that has been damaged and decide how to treat it. If there is too much damage, it will be destroyed. If it seems salvageable, the immune system will attempt to repair the damaged DNA by recruiting DNA repair enzymes. So as previously noted, it is common that someone who has developed cancer has impaired DNA repair processes. A high intake of antioxidants has been shown to protect the integrity of DNA repair enzymes while consumption of L-carnitine, zinc, and B vitamins, such as 6, 12, folate, and niacinamide, has shown to increase the number of repair enzymes in some cases. By aiding the elimination of toxins, you drastically reduce the presence of free radicals created by them and therefore spare your DNA repair enzymes. So basically, decrease the amount of stress you're putting on your body. Rethink the food you're putting in. Rethink the chemicals you're using every single day. Your household cleaning items, um, the chemicals you're allowing to flow in your home, even things like candles. Everything should be analyzed just to make sure you're minimizing your risk of cancer. So, next slide. Due to the bombardment of constant stress and environmental toxins in our modernized society, along with poor dietary nutrient intake and overconsumption of insulin spiking foods, many Americans are chronically inflamed. The consequences of chronic inflammation are vast and often lead to disorders of the brain, digestive tract, immune system, and general inhibition of optimized health. It has been well established that chronic inflammation is strongly linked with cancer development and directly influences several pathways by which cancer becomes more mature and aggressive. So using natural strategies to control your inflammatory response may be one of the most powerful disease mitigating strategies you can use. So in addition to an antioxidant rich diet, inflammation can be controlled effectively by optimizing vitamin D levels, consumption of omega-3 fatty acids, and dietary inclusion of turmeric or curcumin. 
Both of these are highly anti-inflammatory. Um, you just want to make sure that you're using turmeric. Put it on things after you cook it or else you're going to deactivate it. You also want to put it with pepper because pepper is going to help you actually absorb the turmeric. Um, a diet low in sugar, high in healthy fats, and includes high amounts of vegetables, especially leafy green and fibrous ones, is the first step to achieving an anti-inflammatory diet. Due to modern processing, these foods are the most common inflammatory foods and should be avoided. Processed foods, period. Stay away. Corn is also highly processed. Cottonseed oil, canola oil. Canola oil is on everything. Everybody cooks with canola oil. Grocery stores, even healthy ones, whole foods, they put their stuff out and it has canola oil all over it. Their little shopping center, you can go make it. Your dinner's in that is covered in canola oil. So be very aware of this. This is very highly inflammatory. Unfermented soy is very highly inflammatory. Gluten and grain-fed meats and dairy. We want to avoid these things. Maintaining a healthy gut lining is imperative to decrease inflammation in the body and promote overall health. General guidelines for avoiding toxins include drinking clean water, Consume non-GMO and organic produce. Consume meat and dairy only from pasture-raised or grass-fed animals. Avoid pork and avoid common food allergens. Just a few more slides here. I wanted to mention iron elevation. High iron levels have been associated with increased inflammation and increased production of free radicals. It is also well known that rapidly dividing cells require high levels of iron in order to replicate DNA. Iron chelation therapy has been proven successful in the control of certain cancers, but speaking with a qualified health provider prior to doing this type of therapy is important as it can become dangerous if done in the wrong case. So natural chelating foods are legumes, nuts, seeds, curcumin, green tea extract, and quercetin. If your iron levels are high, consider donating blood and incorporating these foods. <clears throat> so the digestive tract is one of the primary defenses of our immune system. Everything we ingest must first be processed by the digestive system. It is one of the most powerful defenses against toxins that we ingest every day. And it is only one cell layer thick. So this is a very powerful membrane, but it's also a very thin and fragile membrane. So we must be very aware and thoughtful about what we are putting up against our um, intestinal lining. So the lining of our gut is filled with more bacteria than cells in our entire body. It is important to maintain a healthy balance and diversity of these bacteria. A healthy microbiome protects us and also can take toxins consumed and turn them into healthy nutrients. Having regular bowel movements daily is a big part of the detoxification process. If we are constipated, we are exposed to toxic buildup and this decays and ferments inside of our gut. So this is very unhealthy for our bodies. So the gut microbes that you have, they can actually, if they're not in the right balance, if you have pathogens that are harmful, they can actually steal all the nutrients that you're taking in. So taking a good probiotic, decreasing blood sugar, all of these things are very important to promote good, healthy gut bacteria. Um, and if we have a healthy balance, it's going to start extracting and turning toxins into things such as vitamin B12. It turns it into healthy substances. So very important. All right. The main point that I want to get across in this presentation is to rethink about how cancer is formed. We do have the ability to control cancer to a certain extent. So I advise you to give your body the best healing resources possible in order to live a long and healthy life full of quality. The key word there is quality. Don't let your cellular damage be greater than your cellular rate of repair. Just whatever you do.
in your life, just think about the amount of exposure and stress you're putting on your body. And just think about it long term, because long term, that is where we will start to see the deficits and it's really hard to recover. So take action now. Just a slide with myself and Dr. David Jockers. I work for Dr. David Jockers at Exodus Health Center as well as on drjockers.com. We do do local and long distance um, nutrition and lifestyle coaching. So essentially what we will do is form a customized plan and help you through your health obstacles. We like to get to the root cause of the problem. That's why I left the hospital was to do something where I could find the root cause of the problem and not just cover up the symptoms as we do in conventional medicine. Don't get me wrong, it has its time and its place, but there are so many other methods of healing, and I want to help you get to the root of your cause. So um, if you would have any questions or would like to talk with someone about the next step for you to take, give me an email at nutrition at drjockers.com. I'd really love to hear from you. Thanks.